Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video sponsored by Incogni, more on them a little bit later on. But for this video, I decided to do a mission that I've always had an idea about doing, but until now I've never actually done. And that is, well, I mean, the title of the video describes the thing, right? Building a base inside a box. Or in other words, I'm building a box that will land on the surface of a planet or moon, and then with the press of a button, will open up, unfold, and just create a nice big surface base. Well, I say big, it has to fit inside said box, so it can only be so big. But it will create a surface base, and it just... I really like the idea of that, like I've done a lot of missions in the past, for example my uh, single Duna colonization video, where I have these structures that are all compact, I press a button and then unfold using the uh, the cal controller, it's always really fun, like it's a bit of a pain setting the sequencing up because I don't know, it's a little bit faffy, isn't it, with the timeline editor? But when it's actually all working and you see it actually do the thing you programmed it to do, it's really satisfying. And this, I think, is probably one of the most satisfying builds I've ever done. I am... Um, when I, when I tested it out on the runway uh, with the unfolding sequence and all that, I pressed it and I was like, yes. Uh, this has turned out exactly as I wanted it to turn out. Now, uh, this is not an idea that's like unique to this video. I have seen other videos of putting a base inside a box and then said base unfolds itself. You know, I've just explained what it was. Um, but the first guy I ever saw do this um, is a channel... Well, 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 I say was a channel because I can't find this channel for the life of me. Was a channel called Daniel Kim. Uh, he used to make really like cool Kerbal Space Program videos. I used to love watching, I think it was like 2016 era, <laughs> uh, was when I used to watch Daniel Kim videos. He didn't make many, but when he did, they were always bangers. And I wanted to try and find Daniel Kim's Base in a Box Kerbal Space Program video because that was one of the ones that really inspired me to make this one eight years later. <laughs> but I just couldn't, for the life of me, I couldn't find it. It's kind of unfortunate that there is another YouTuber called Daniel Kim, who is very famous. He does the pop danthology. Well, I get he did do the pop danthology videos. I don't know if he still does. Uh, so that's kind of like the when you search Daniel Kim, that's who comes up. And I guess Daniel Kim is quite a common name anyway. Did he change his channel name? Does anyone else? Uh, is this like a Mandela effect? Am I living in? Did I wake up in a different timeline? I see that Nicardo Avocado is now skinny. You know, Flappy Bird has been announced. Maybe I just woke up and we're in the Berenstein Bears universe. I don't know. But I couldn't find it. So does anyone know what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about, then let me know in the comment section below. Hey, Daniel Kim, if you're watching this. Maybe he, I'm, I'm guessing he just changed his channel name. And because I, I can't remember the title of any of the specific videos, I couldn't, you know, maybe that's why. But that was, um, that, that was the inspiration for me to make this video. Now, as you can see, I've kind of opened up the box and I'm building the base out like this. And you might be able to tell, you know, some of you might be thinking, Matt, I see you've placed a lot of stuff there. Doesn't that mean there's going to be loads of part clipping when the box is closed? So anyway, as you can see, I've got the solar panels on that big extending pylon. It looks really nice. It kind of serves two cool purposes, actually. First of all, it gives a nice sort of big arm for the solar panels to be on, and it provides a nice little roof. So if we landed on a planet with rain, which, you know, exists with the stock volumetric clouds mod, it provides a little bit of rain shelter. Obviously, the Kerbals would be living inside the little capsule, but, you know... It's just, a, it's just a nice thing, I guess. Now we're building a new craft. This is going to be our return vehicle because I think I'm kind of over just stranding Kerbals like on the surface of a planet or moon and just leaving them at the end of the video. Um, actually, no, I'm not because it's so fun to like build big bases that have a permanent crew aboard. But for this one, it's like very small, very pokey. I feel like it would be a little bit cruel to have Kerbals like live on this for the next millennia. So I thought I'd add a little return vehicle that's going to get the two crew members back to the surface of Kerbin. And it's only two crew members because it's a very small base. I think it'd be a little bit too, uh, too a bit too cozy to have more than two crew aboard. Uh, but I don't think we need to show you the construction of the rocket right because it's it's kind of boring. So let's fade across to the launch pad. As you can see, the box base is stowed away in a fairing, keeping it safe and secure. Just like how Incogni keeps your data safe and secure, by letting you reclaim control over your personal data online and keep it safe from data brokers and trackers who have sponsored today's video. Incogni is here to protect your online information, negotiating with data broker companies to remove your name from their databases, ensuring your personal info remains private and secure. They do this by hunting down and contacting brokers on your behalf and requesting the removal of your personal information. 
Now, why should you care? Well, like poor old Jeb, your data can be bought, collected and sold, which can lead to issues like denied bank loans and credit cards, higher insurance rates and even identity theft. According to the 2022 annual data breach report by the Identity Theft Resource Center, the number of victims has gone up nearly 41.5% from 2021. Incogni's annual subscription is great and something that I actually do use. If you sign up, Incogni will send repeated removal requests for as long as you're signed up, ensuring that your data is not only removed, but stays removed. It's time to take control of your privacy. Join me and countless others who are protected by Incogni, and the first 100 of you to use my exclusive code MATLOWN will get an incredible 60% discount of Incogni's services. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below today. And we are off to a flying start, literally, because the rockets fly. Have I ever actually, I feel like I would have used that rubbish joke before, but I feel like I've never actually made that joke. Are there any Matt Lown historians in the comments now can say, actually, you know, in uh, November of 2018, you made this video, blah, blah, blah. Okay. As you can see, the rocket is rather big. It's a bit of a Delta IV heavy, I guess, inspired looking thing. Which is kind of weird, it looks like it's got quite poor thrust to weight ratio considering how powerful it is and how small that payload fairing is. But of course, as mentioned, uh, in order to kind of get the nice box effect, this vehicle does use quite a shamelessly large amount of part clipping. I kind of had to do either one, I had to do one of two things. I either could have no part clipping and the box would have to be massive and bit, bit not very fun. <laughs> or I could do this, have lots of part clipping but have a small box and it just looks really fun to see it unpack in a very impossible way. So never claim this was meant to be a realistic mission. Uh, NASA, if you're watching this, don't do not do this. Don't do not do this for Artemis 3 or anything, any mission really. Uh, unless, of course, we discover a way in which you can clip real things together in real life. That would be, a, that would be hugely beneficial to life if we could do plot park clipping in real life. But we can't, so let's move on. Um... Actually, yeah, that's, that's all I had to say, really. It was a big rocket, a uh, small fairing. That is why. We, we've got a very dense payload because of all the park clipping. And, yeah, that's... Uh, well, most of the rocket's gone now, hasn't it? We've ditched the two side boosters as we gradually approach the Kármán line. Did we ever agree as a community what to call the Kármán line in Kerbal Space Program? Do we call it the Kerman line or just 70 kilometers? I don't actually know if there's a consensus, really, because obviously Kármán line specifically refers to Earth, which is 100 kilometers above the surface generally the internationally agreed upon border of space uh so i kind of say common line in ksp and then some people get annoyed in the comments saying actually common line is just earth it's not a careful space program but you know i feel like those are just the actually kind of people like, like everyone knows what you mean when you say common line and speaking of that we've just we've just crossed it 70 kilometers we can deploy our payload fairing can't see anything because it's very dark I, I keep meaning to i keep forgetting to um uh, set up a custom tufx profile so that i can have things like brighter on the dark sides of planets and moons or someone suggested it and i was also planning on doing this anyway but someone suggested in my last Kerbal Space Program videos comment section uh, to install the mod Planet Shine because Planet Shine you can boost the ambient lighting on the dark side of planets and moons and I used to use Planet Shine a lot for that purpose. I don't remember why I ever uninstalled it. I think what I did was I decided to just do a complete uninstall of KSP and reinstall and do a video where I installed all my visual mods and I just didn't install planet shine maybe that's why because uh, scatterer is it scatterer or parallax one of the big mods now uh, does include the thing that planet shine advertises to do which is it reflects the light from planets so um so yeah i, I think i need to install planet shine if it's still if it's compatible i don't know why it wouldn't be compatible but i i don't know if it is <laughs> i can't guarantee that it is but i'm pretty sure i don't see the reason why it wouldn't be compatible so i need to install planet shine to boost my ambient lighting in in dark scenes and there we are we have we have a mun periapsis i was kind of waffling all through the planning of the mun encounter and then execution of that burn to get us on trajectory but now we can deploy our transfer stage solar panels and uh, get ready to perform our circularization at the mun now i should probably talk about the design of this spacecraft because i haven't yet and i skipped forward <laughs> i skipped through it during the build time lapse i haven't really addressed the like 
the, the, the whys and the ways in which I have designed it. So first of all, we have the Wolfhound engine stage, which is going to get us almost to the surface. Like, it's going to do most of the landing. And then my plan was, right before we hit the surface, I would stage it. It would fall, get destroyed on the surface. And then we would land using the four engines of our return vehicle, like that tiny little diddly capsule you saw me building in the space plane hangar. So it does have a bit more fuel than it needs, so that it can support the landing of the surface base. Then when it touches down, I'd have the whole thing fall over and we have a puff engine, which you can't see at the moment on the on the front of the box. Oh, it's going to come into view, I think. You see that little like protrusion at the front of the box. That's a puff engine just to kind of lower our velocity as we fall over and land in a correctly oriented position. Also, we have the Kerbal Space Program logo on the side of the box just to tell me which way round the box needs to go. If I can read the text, then it's the right way up. If the text is upside down or what have you, it ain't the right way up. And I couldn't be bothered to make like an arrow, like just, uh, flag design. So I went with something that had text on it. So I went with the Kerbal Space Program logo. And yeah, here we are performing our MUN touchdown. So yeah, that, that was, so I kind of went through the design of the landing vehicle. In practice, I then sort of panicked and didn't, didn't land it how I designed to land it so we could just watch how that plays out it was a kind of a it was kind of a chaotic descent so here we are we're approaching yeah we are now wait for it there we are we are sub one kilometer from the surface so we're just keeping an eye on our surface speed now trying to keep things nice and slow I also wanted to land in a spot that wouldn't land us you know well I wanted to land in a spot that wasn't just a rock field because then the base would just unfold and there'd be rocks clipping through it and I've kind of ended up landing at the worst possible spot. So now we're going to have to do a bit of a hop to get clear of this rock field. Although, actually, that being said, I think here looks pretty good, actually. We've got a little area that's not got that many rocks. So we get a touchdown because I then... I just panicked. I was like, right, I can't stage now because I might need to move and hop. And then, then we ended up falling over the wrong direction. So now we're landing on a rock. Uh, it was a disaster. But hey, I got to use the, uh, the puff engine as I'd intended it to slow our descent down, but I wasn't happy with this base location and we don't have wheels. So I decided to do a quick save and then just do some danger sliding. So we could just fire up the Wolfhound engine and just sort of slowly push the surface base into a spot that didn't have loads of rocks next to it. I had to go very, very slowly uh, to ensure nothing blew up. Um, but yeah, in just a second, we're going to have to get rid of this Wolfhound stage is somehow and also undock the landing stage and then unfold the surface base. And I thought to do that, uh, it'd be more fun to do that kind of live. So once we're in kind of in position, there's going to be a crossfade and you'll be listening to live in the moment, Matt. Okay, so let's do it. So I haven't tested this yet, so I hope it works. We're going to decouple this, switch to it. And then, oh, Waz does, oh no, no, but I have a, I have a, an, I have a relay, oh, right, so I've accidentally landed on the dark side of the MUN, because I wasn't paying attention, and now, because the MUN is tidally locked, we're never going to, okay, so, this was completely the wrong place to land, but we're going to try and work with it, uh, can I use the auto SAS controls, uh, I've already got max. Oh, can, I can change the thrust. Oh, no, I can't change the thrust limits, to be fair. Oh, this is a disaster. Oh, but maybe not. Okay. This is good. Let's quick save. Um, and then radial out. And then just... Ooh. Do you know what? I don't care. That's, that's sufficiently destroyed in my eye. <laughs> Um, okay, right, so now let's make another quick save. Now I'm going to decouple this. This is, uh, I'm now very scared, considering how unsuccessful everything has been so far. Oh! Great, perfect. Another quick save is in order, I think. <laughs> now we just need to hover this thing so it's kind of away from the base. I'm going to turn my computer's volume down so it doesn't get picked on the microphone. Just slowly hopping, okay, and then retrograde. Now we are sufficiently far away. Lovely. More delta feed than we could possibly ever need in here, so that's good. We are touched down, so let's just open up the doors. 
and get the solar panels deployed. So this doesn't die whilst we're not using it. Okay, now it's time for the moment of truth. So first, we're going to just decouple all of that. It didn't get destroyed. Sad times. Oh well, let's continue. So, we're going to activate the first phase of the unpacking. Here we go. Oh! It's beautiful. It's working. Perfect. Okay, here we go. Phase two. This is going so well, guys. <laughs> oh! And there we are. The unfolding base hath been unfolded. Oh, no, we haven't quite finished yet. We'll do one more thing, the rover. And there go the little wheels. Undock. Now we need to switch to it. Oh no, I've got no probe control, oh no! Okay, hang on, we need to go radial in, right? Radial out. And then break. I'm taking this as, as good enough. There we go. Bit, bit of a shame that the uh, that nothing works because I've landed on the dark side of the man. Oh, nothing ever goes to plan on this channel. But there is, you know, by and large, a successful um, deployment of the base. So we can turn the lights on this thing and get our Kerbals over there. So we've got Bill Kerman, our resident engineer. Before he fully settles in, I want to just sort of somewhat crack and prove the base. So we're going to fly over to this place here. Because I don't want this piston, like, crackening out, you know? So we're going to get his welding tool out. Um, we're going to weld a strut. Oh, my goodness. He's had a seizure. But despite that, he was able to successfully weld this block to a strut, I think. So it should now be stable. And that's literally it. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> so there's Bob coming. Just inspect our... Um, I haven't come up with a canon explanation for these tanks yet. Maybe these are like the... Uh, food things <laughs> this could be water i don't know let's get him on board the base so there we go. grab that and board of course we've got free iva so let's uh, enter the seat kind of annoying this rover configuration but hey they want they, they sleep in these chairs facing the stars so isn't that nice okay now let's go and grab bob kerman resident scientist and while he's on EVA, in fact, we could probably just get him to uh, maneuver the rover a little bit closer to the surface base. So let's just try and pilot this guy down. Oh! Board. There we go. <gasps> oh! It's okay. <laughs> I hope. Oh my goodness. Let's just disengage. Right, and then quick save. Nice. Okay, hang on. Let's just... I see the problem. We need to control from the command seats. There we are. And we're going to disable the SAS control unit as well. The reason I put the SAS units into rovers, because you don't need them, is just so that if you, like, flip over, you can self-right yourself, basically. But there we are. Arriving. At the base. So we have disembarked the rover. Let's take a little tour of the uh, the one and only base um, building module. Oh, I see my the pipes I constructed to connect the containers to the habitation module have uh, disappeared. We need to fix this. Where's the engineer? Bill? There he is. Get on EVA. There we are. Gonna quickly wire this back up. So we've got this little pipe here. So these are fuel lines. They're just here to serve like a decorative purpose. To kind of help sell that these are like part of the life support system. These tanks here. So that's gotta go there to there. Goodness. Oh. 
Now look, now look, now look what's happened. Goodness me. There we go, that can go there. This go. <laughs> don't know why he's just inducing a bit of break dancing every time I do this. There we are. Right. And we can resume. So, um, well, Bill, now he's here. Now he's out. He can get on board the rover. We'll go for a little drive with the two of them. We'll extend the little aerial for no reason other than the fact it looks very cool. <laughs> Extended like that. And then we'll do a tour of the base with Bob Kerman. So, we'll first of all inspect the outdoor apparatus. So we have our little... Oh, we got to have a Sputnik. Got to have a Sputnik. I feel like... I felt like we needed a probe core of some kind on this thing. And has to be Sputnik. Oh my goodness, there's another pipe that's not connected. Although it kind of looks cool at that weird angle. So we'll leave it. So let's run some scientific experiments. We're going to conduct a material study collect the data and of course we can restore that to be run another day although we will leave the doors open because it looks better in it there we are looks very nice the restock I've never really had a proper look at the restock size junior actually in detail we want to say a little baby kraken a sandwich and an assortment of other things, little plant section some um, uranium crystals maybe some like plasma quartz. I've been playing a lot of Planet Crafter recently, so now I'm just seeing Planet Crafter stuff here. <laughs> okay, then we can observe the mystery goo. There it is there. The goo seems to be less dense here. Well, that's excellent to receive there. We'll log the gravity data, seismic data, the temperature, and of course, the atmospheric pressure. I'm guessing that one is a very low value considering we're on the moon. And we'll take all the data. And then we've got these two experiments here. So let's run an analysis for resources. And we'll run an atmosphere. Oh, there's an atmosphere. So that was a pretty quick experiment, wasn't it? And uh, oh, we can turn the screen on. A little bit of a visual flare going on. And yeah, so let's do... Oh, oh no! I've destroyed a solar panel! Oh, that's a shame. Anyway, let's uh, get on board the base. So, in fact, I haven't actually finished extending it, have I? Because we've got to get that drill deployed as well. So let's board, first of all, and do a little walking tour. So here is our uh, science lab. Well, normally there's a science lab here, I guess. Maybe if we've got stuff in the side compartments, that opacifies the glass. Not quite sure. We've got our little seating area. We can say the head cannon is that this is like smart glass that turns into a TV or something. Um, so that's where they watch their films when they're not doing scientific experiments. We've got uh, space, tools, food, not food, parts, snacks, rock storage, board games, very important, more science, science, and junk, of course. And we have a, uh, a fire extinguisher, which I can uh, use. There we are. No. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Okay, gonna drop that. Now let's uh, let's ascend. So we're gonna open this hatch here, and just just where's the ladder? There's the ladder. I'm just gonna climb up and enter the cupola modules. We can close this. Now we've got a lovely panoramic view, made even better. Now we've not got that solar panel there. So really, it wasn't an accident. It was by design. Fuse box as well. Stop using bits of metal as fuses. You have spares. They'll never learn. And, uh, yeah, more snacks. So, I feel this has been a pretty comprehensive tour. Oh, well, I've fallen down. So, let's go on EVA this way. There we are. So, now we are on EVA. I'm going to quick save. Oh, actually, you need to switch back to the base. We can deploy that drill. So, here we go. Deploy. I probably bound it to an action group, which I don't remember. And we can start the service harvester. Lovely stuff. Okay, now, where's Bob? We're going to go for a little drive with our two space frogs. And we'll, we'll put them back on the base afterwards and we'll simulate a, uh, a mission of sorts. But let's, actually, do you know what? Let's quickly, quick save <laughs> uh, before I break something else. And then we can just set off. We're going to disable SAS. Now, is there any, are there any points of interest we can go visit? Having a little look around. Unfortunately, while Parallax 2.0... It's very beautiful. It does make locating uh, breaking ground scannable stuff a little bit more tricky because it's a bit more camouflaged by the uh, 
Or, well, you know, the ground scatter of all these rocks. Oh! No! We're all fine, we're fine, we're fine. We're not fine. I've got no SES control. Brakes. It's all fine so far. Nothing's breaking. Oh my goodness, this is so intense. If I just retract the wheels and then deploy them. And then that... And it's fine, you see? And then we can just write it. Where's the SAS wheel? God, this has not gone to plan. So we're going to toggle talk. Lovely. And it's and it's just it's just that simple, guys. It's just that simple. Now, where did our kerbals go? I, they didn't die, I hope. Oh, I really missed the ability to switch to stuff more easily, like in KSP2. I'm pretty sure there's a mod that adds that in KSP1, to be fair. I'm just... I just can't be bothered, you know, it seems like a lot of effort. It's not, but it seems that way to me. <laughs> okay, and then Bob Kerman is here. Let's get him up on EVA, uh, what's it called? Jetpack, RCS thrusters, what have you. That's why I don't, that's why I don't do live commentaries very often, guys. Okay, right, we're going to board. And I feel, I feel like we've done a good little drive here, actually. I think we can return back to the base. Having, look, we're so far away. Let's observe the mystery goods, see if we get any different readings. 40. Ah, oh, just. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Let's quickly. Uh, so we're gonna. Um, uh. So what? Where's the SAS wheel? There it is. Toggle talk. There we are. Oh. And disable talk. Nice. I feel like I should probably keep this window open. Oh my goodness. This thing controls so horribly. <laughs> okay. Let's just take time out. And forwards. All right, yeah. Um, where's the the thing? Toggle talk. Nice. And we are definitely controlling in the right direction, right? It's not that. So control from here. Maybe if I disable steering of the rear wheel, so it won't turn quite as like hard. Uh, steering disable. So now it's like normal car steering. Oh, we can turn on our headlights. You know, <laughs> our kerbals. Oh, isn't that nice? And we'll just slowly, safely, safely make our way back to the surface base. We'll then put our Kerbals on board to kind of simulate a mission. And then we've got to bring them home. And I think, you know, I'm liking this little vibe, this little live commentary thing. We get, oh, let's just retract the wheels. Made everything worse doing that. But, and then, once we're the right way up, we could, uh, hang on. This has been terrible. I'm so sorry. Uh, toggle talk. There we go. And whoop, too much. There we go. Now let's let's disembark the rover and never use it ever again. I feel that's a good idea. So Bill Kerman can leave his seat. And you know what? Now we've got Bill Kerman. We we may as well fix this little rogue pipe that's not worked <laughs> properly. I think it just like it, during tests the pipes did deploy. Um, I did, I'm filming this on a different day to when I actually filmed the deployment of the base, but I felt like when it deployed, like when it deployed, it worked. So maybe just this is like a glitch that happened when it was loaded. I don't know. Anyway, Bill Kerman, you can now board the vessel, please, at some point. There we are. And, uh, yeah, let's just get him in, uh, this one here. Nice. Okay, now we need to get the other frog. There he is. Leave seat. Oh. But in dramatic fashion. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Right, there we go. And grab. And board. And we'll sit them together. Seems nice. And I guess then we'll just uh, make a quick save, maybe. <laughs> and then we'll just time warp for a bit. There you go. And we're now simulating passage of time, researching stuff on this little outpost. I think that's enough time. How long's it been? 68 days! Was it? I feel like it wasn't. Oh yeah, we're like 68 days. That's like Kerbin relative. In Whatever. I think they've had enough. There's enough. We, we can go home. We've done a lot of research. We've learned many things. For example, as we know, the mystery goo is less dense here. And some other stuff that <laughs> we learned. We learned that the rover was a nice idea, but ultimately a bit rubbish and we learned that uh, I'm not very good at live commentary because this has probably not been the most engaging thing I've ever recorded but I feel like it's a nice little 
I don't know, because a lot of people say that they like the videos, like where I've done the whole video in live commentary. But I feel like that's a bit much. It's a bit stressful because you got to like, make sure you don't make too many mistakes when filming the mission. Because uh, you can't really edit it when it's live commentary as much as you can when it's like post-launch commentary. Uh, but people like them, so this is like a happy meeting where like the beginning of the video is not scripted, but you know, edited and time-lapsed and all that. And then the latter half can be just like the slower pace. So, I think we're ready to depart. SAS enabled. Oh, I didn't take the data from the base. You know what? I don't care. <laughs> and we are off. So yeah, we've got way more delta V than we need. We've got about 600 meters per second more delta V than we actually require. Because like I said in the beginning of this video, um, I, uh, <laughs> I intended this to kind of help serve as the landing stage for that big, heavy, dense unfolding base, which would require a bit of extra delta V. I wasn't really sure how much fuel I would need for that landing operation. As you might remember, it was kind of a... Uh, a bit more of a, it had a bit of an improvisational <laughs> feel to it when I actually came to do the landing, like doing the danger sliding to a better, better site. So I was like, I'm not really sure how it's going to go, so let's just add more fuel than I need, just in case. And, well, you know, and now here we are. So let's wait for our apoapsis to get to about, I don't know, 30 kilometers. Tends to be what I aim for when going to the moon, although I can't fly directly towards the horizon. Just a, oh my goodness, and whilst I was talking about the nav ball, I failed to realize that our uh, Apogee is much higher than that. In fact, we don't even need to circulate. We can just make a maneuver. Control locked, but I've got a satellite. Oh, I have got a satellite dish. Well, it's fine. I don't need that. I can just do a burn. But also, like, when we round this... There we go. I've got connection to the KSC now, so we can make a maneuver. And we'll just get ourselves back home. So, there we are. Uh, this is not very efficient. Doesn't really matter because we've got way too much fuel. But, you know, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make the effort. You know, we'll make the effort. Uh, fine. Whatever. Point towards our maneuver. And um, where is it? It's in three minutes. Ages away. So we can just initiate a bit of time. Time what we overshot. It's fine. <laughs> so there's the circularization. Thanks to the rubbish default camera spinning upon circularization. And then now we'll just cancel the maneuver. Cancel the maneuver node and just watch. And wait for our apoapsis to get to our apoapsis. Our periapsis around Kerbin. To be within the atmosphere, but not too low that we'll be entering kind of like too fast and burn up. Uh, that's probably too low, but we'll go with it. 33 kilometers. So let's time warp away from the Mun. Goodbye. And prepare to re-enter. So I said, yeah, we had, I said at the time we had about 600 meters per second excess delta V. Turns out I was actually a bit, <laughs> a bit more than that. We had 742 excess meters per second delta V. But you know, it's all fine. And it's going to help slow us down for re-entry. So, yeah, it wasn't excess. Should we stage whilst the engines are burning? Oh, wasn't that fun? How fun was that? That was worthy of a like and subscribe if you're not already, if you ask me. Um, and you should ask me, because I'm not biased at all. Why would I be biased, you know? <laughs> now, it is a bit of a shame that it's very dark, so we can't really see where we're landing, but we can see our biome, thanks to Kerbal Engineer Redux here. So we're above the highlands. Oh, can we land in the ocean? I'm guessing not. We're probably over a very large continent for it to be flipping between grasslands and highlands. I said that really weird, didn't I? Grasslands and highlands. Grasslands and highlands. Uh, whatever. I've said both ways now. And, uh, yeah. So although there's, like, bits jutting out beyond the realm of the heat shield, the, I guess, hit box, for want of a better term, of this capsule is, uh, I guess, not, like, these aren't, does that make sense? <laughs> I'm running out of steam, as you can tell. Um, so let's just time warp or disable SAS. Don't need that now. I mean, kind of get a feel. Well, we've got our altitude gauge here. But you can sort of see the clouds to give you an indication of uh, how high we are above the surface of the highlands. So this is actually set to be relative to ground level. So this is actually how high we are off the ground. Oh, the parachutes are deploying. Okay, they're deployed. Never mind. That was a little bit scary. We can jettison the remainder of our heat shield as well. And, uh, <laughs> why did it explode? I always found that funny. Like, it's just a piece of ablator, right? There's no, like, combustibles on board. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of nice. We've got these, um, the remnants of the decouplers. Actually, look like little sort of makeshift, well, not makeshift, but, like, purpose-built little shock absorbers on the bottom of this craft. So we can pretend that we always intended to, uh, 
land on land. Uh, oh, the, the mission was extended by a couple of days just then. Uh, land on land. And look, whilst we wait for people to arrive to pick us up, we have a little solar panel. And we do have the big solar panels here as well. Um, but maybe it's not realistic to kind of redeploy them after re-entering. I don't know. But we can redeploy them now. And we can open up that window. Whilst well, open up, we can have a look at Bill and Bob. Look how thrilled they are to be back home. There, that's the spirit. That's more like it, Bob Cummins. But yeah, there we are, all landed, which means I now need to give a big thanks to all the names on the right-hand side of the screen, my patrons and YouTube channel members who make all of this content possible. Thank you so much to everyone who supports what I do here. I, I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Also, massive thanks to Incogony once again for sponsoring today's video. And uh, yeah, that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I've been kind of pushing more modded videos recently, but I like going back to stock KSP every now and then doing little missions like this, which I've always had an idea to do, but never done. And now I've done it, so now